Recently, I switched from using iCloud to sync my vaults to using Obsidian Sync, and today I would like to share you that experience. I'm going to show you all the ways that you can sync your vault, show you the pros and cons of each method, and finally give you a final verdict of what's right for you. If you are new here, my name is Darren, and in this channel, we talk about personal knowledge management and self-development. If you are into these topics, please consider subscribing. There are two ways that you can sync your vault. First is using iCloud service, and second is using Obsidian Sync. If you are in a complete Apple ecosystem, which means that all your devices are from Apple, like iPhone, iPad, and Mac, then iCloud could be an interesting option for you. But if that's not the case, then the only formally supported way today would be Obsidian Sync. The way that iCloud syncing work is that you have a single folder that is stored in iCloud, and then all the machines are trying to read and write this folder. While for Obsidian Sync, it works a little differently. You have a remote vault that is stored in the cloud, but you also have local vaults that are stored locally. And then these local folders are trying to update the information in the remote vault. Now, let's take a look at the first method of syncing your vault, which is using iCloud. And this is extremely simple. All you have to do is create a vault and then pick a location to be within iCloud. Now you can try creating some notes. If you would like to access this vault from your iPhone or iPad, all you have to do is open the app and then choose the desired location. Now it's going to sync the files. And now you're going to see the exact same thing that is on the Mac. So now the vaults are synced already. Now let's take a look at pros and cons of iCloud Sync. The good thing is it's free, of course, with iCloud service. And second is that it's pretty simple to set up. But there are a couple of bad things about iCloud Sync. One is that it's pretty slow to load on iPhone and iPad, and that's the key reason why I switched to Obsidian Sync. Second is that if you use Daily Note feature, you can get the duplicated files from time to time. And this results from the iCloud files conflicts, which I don't have a solution at the moment. And last but not least is that you have to sync every single thing. It means your files, your settings and plugins. So if you want to have control over what to sync, then iCloud Sync might not be an option for you. First and foremost, if you would like to use Obsidian Sync, you have to pay. And it's going to cost you about 8 to 10 bucks per month. I'm going to leave the link in the description for you to purchase. Once you have purchased Obsidian Sync, the first step is that you have to create a local vault first. And in order to do that, you just have to hit create here. I'm going to name this Obsidian Sync Test. And I'm going to choose any location. It could be in iCloud or it could be a local folder. Next, you have to go to Settings, Core Plugins. Once you purchase Obsidian Sync, you're going to see this option right here. And you just have to turn it on. Now, if you remember the diagram, you have just created the local vault in your Mac. Now, in this step, you're going to create the remote vault. So you have to choose vault. I've already have my vault, so ignore that. But for you, if this is your first time, you're going to have no vault at all. So you have to create a new one. And you can name it anything you want. It doesn't have to be the same as the local vault. You can choose to have a password or not. I will choose to have a password. You've just created the remote vault. Now you have to connect it to the local vault. All right, now you can start singing. Since we have no notes, so it's going to take no time. If you've already had your vault and you would like to connect it to the remote vault, all you have to do is open that vault and then click settings and then follow the steps that I just told you. Now we can try creating some notes here. Now, let's sync this vault to the phone. All you have to do is open Obsidian app, click on Set up Obsidian Sync, select the vault that you would like to sync. You can rename your vault if you want, but I will leave it like this. We have to enter the password. Click Start Syncing. 
The cool thing about Obsidian Sync over iCloud Sync is that you have much more control. You can choose what to sync, like what files to sync, what settings to sync. Like for me personally, I sync every single thing, like the appearance, the settings. But for many people, they don't like to sync the themes. They don't like to sync the hotkeys. So that's all up to you. Now we're just going to close it out. Right now, using Obsidian Sync, I have Obsidian on my Mac and on my iPhone opening the same vault. So if I type something on iPhone, you see that it updates on Mac as well and vice versa. It is really seamless and quick to update the files. So I feel like it is a much better option than iCloud, but of course that comes with the cost. And that's how you do Obsidian Sync. The cool thing about Obsidian Sync is that it's super fast to load on all devices. You have control over what to sync. You can just sync the files or you can sync the theme as well. Or you can sync every single thing. It's all up to you. And one of the coolest things is that you have the version control feature as well. So you can go back to the previous version if you made some mistakes. But the downside is that it's not cheap. It's about 8 to 10 bucks, which is a lot of money. And also, it's a little bit more complicated to set up than the iCloud Sync. So here's the final verdict for you. If you are in a complete Apple ecosystem, then you should give iCloud Sync a try. If it works, then great. But if it doesn't, then you should try Obsidian Sync, which is a wonderful service. But if you use Android or Windows, then you have no other choice than to use Obsidian Sync. And 8 to 10 bucks could be really worth it if you use Obsidian a lot. I hope you find this video useful. And if you have any questions, please leave down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.